Hello, my name is Jo May and I am the creative facilitator at Recreate Island. We are delighted to be a part of Crinunog, a full day of creative activities for children and young people. At Recreate, we are passionate about repurposing and reusing all kinds of materials and items. That is why we have invited you all on a seek and gather adventure to collect materials for today's workshop. And Crinu is Irish for gathering. And so we thought it very fitting that we gather the items. But if you haven't managed to collect anything, that's totally okay. We want you to be a part of the workshop. You can make something afterwards and it's definitely encouraged. And you can also start the seek and gather adventure anytime you wish. So did any of you manage to guess what we might be making today? I'm personally very excited by this. It comes in many different forms. It could be a diamond, it could be an insect, it could be a 3D object. Yep, you might have guessed it. It's a kite or a flying structure. So I've gathered some materials today and I'm gonna run through them quickly and then I'm gonna go through a little bit of making and then that'll be the end of today. So I have some wool. This is gonna be our tether or our string. I have a coat hanger, which could be used for the form of our kite or flying structure. I have um, some dowel. Don't you go anywhere. Let me just weigh you down. I have some dowel, which you could use for your crossbar. Okay. I also have some straws, which you can use as well. And you can just join them together by pushing one inside the other. So you could have it like that, or you could have a little teeny weeny one like that. Um, and I've also got some normal straws as well, which I've just pushed one inside the other to give us our crossbow stop. I have, thankfully, Mother Nature has given me some excellent sticks for my crossbar as well. So you could do something like that, use something like those. And then, so that's our bit that's going to be like holding our structure flat and out. We could, for the main part of the body, we could use, um, I've gathered uh, a carrier bag, which you could use for your kite, some newspaper, which you can use, some tent material, which is very fancy, leftover broken tent, and then also some packaging, which came in a parcel, which is quite nice, because it's almost like wing kind of qualities to it. So I'm just gonna pop those down over here. And then the tools I have, I have some gaffer tape, which is really good, probably recommended more so than using cellar tape, because it's a little bit stronger. I have some scissors, I have a pencil, a sheet of paper. The pencil is so I can do some ideas beforehand when I'm, I have normally have loads of ideas in my head and I need to just take them from here and put them down onto paper. I'm sure I'm not the only person who's like that. So yeah, pencil, um, some scissors, and then I call this a pokey tool. So this is like a sharp, one end is sharp to make holes in so you can tie your tether on. So let's get started on our designing page. Now I'm gonna use um, a Sharpie pen because on this lovely white piece of paper, it's kind of difficult to see the pencil. Um, so I'm gonna use this. So I'm gonna start with my traditional diamond shape for my kite. And this is just a doodle sheet really, but you could use it for your real one if you wanted to. Okay, so I've done my traditional diamond shape like that. Now I'm gonna give it a rounded top of over here, and then I'm gonna give it a little bit over here, maybe one over here to match on that side, and then maybe a roundy bottom on the bottom. That looks almost like a flower from this. Uh, now I'm gonna use the same sheet of paper to uh, Fold it, uh, fold it over, so once I've drawn my design onto this, I can fold it out and use it to draw around. So I'm gonna turn it into a square, a little bit like origami. We're gonna ignore this little bit here, okay? So I'll just fold that back just so it's out of our way. And then this fold here is gonna be the center line for my kite or my flying structure, okay? So. I am gonna use the similar idea to this. So I had it kind of like rounded at the top here. Um, I love doing this because you never quite know what you're gonna get. Uh, so I've got my rounded bit there and then I had another rounded bit that's quite big, rounded bit there. And then maybe a little roundy bit at the bottom and then I'm gonna join them together. Okay, who knows what that is gonna turn out like. So. You could do any kind of random shape. Um, you don't have to obviously, you know, use your 
wonderful imaginations and creativity to think of some really weird tricks. I was thinking almost um, that you could do it like a pizza. You could do like food things that might be quite funny. Peas in a pod, maybe. That would be kind of cool flying structure, wouldn't it? See vegetables flying up in the air. Um, OK, so I've done this really roughly and not really used my lines. So now let's see what we have. And it kind of almost looks like a sort of bee, maybe? Let me try now. I'm just going to... So this would be the time where um, you draw around it on your materials, like you carry a bag, your tent material or your packaging or a newspaper or whatever, and now this would be the time that you would decorate um, decorate it to whatever form you want it to be. So, I don't know, is that a bee shape? Maybe that's its wing there. Maybe give it some bug eyes. So you could do this with paint or markers or colouring in, or maybe you could do like a collage type of thing, maybe using carrier bags or bin liners, or you could even use tin foil. And um, then it would be lovely when it catches the light up in the up in the sky. So there we go. We'll pretend that that's a bee. Okay. So like I said, you lay this down, draw around it, cut it out, decorate it. And now the next part is I'm not going to do that part, but I'm going to start making my crossbow, my structure to keep it flat, keep its wings out. So I'm going to use that the park or my back garden provided. And I'm going to do a little cross like that. OK, so with this bit, I quite like using this bit. So I'm going to use wool for this. Now, I wouldn't recommend this for the tether because if the wind were to blow, whew, this would break and the wool would break and your kite would be going on its own adventure. So I'm just going to rip off a little bit now. Just remove what we don't need off of the table. So you're going to tie this around the two sticks, OK? And tie it. So, yeah. And then we're going to open them up and then we're going to get into a little bit of a rhythm. So we're going to go, say, from the bottom corner here, we're going to go up here, up and over, and then we're going to go around the back and then down from here, down to this one. And then around the back and back up and over and around the back. And then you could even go around the back and then around and up. So by the time you've done a few wrappings, I'm not going to do too many, but by the time you've done a few wrappings, you've got a nice firm hold on that. OK, then you're going to, I've left a little bit there, so you're just going to tie that off and then that is ready to stick down onto your kite structure. So we, we'd use this nice strong tape for this one. I'm just going to do it really quickly. OK. Like so. Now, when we're, um, the bit that I call this the um, hang gliding hammock, um, so you, we're going to make some holes in our uh, kite base, so in, our, in our structure, uh, the flat bit. So I would recommend putting a little bit of tape on the back where the cross goes, just to reinforce it, because we're going to be making holes in it. OK. So, lovely, like that. I do like that blue colour. Um, so... We can see that our cross is, our cross is there. So we're just going to do a hole above the stick and below, four holes in total, and then on the other side, top and below, like that. Okay. And you're going to thread through your uh, ribbon or string or something that's nice and strong. Maybe you have some uh, fishing wire at home or something. So you're just going to thread that through the hole so it comes out the back there. Okay, thread it back in to the hole below, take it, tie it off, take it across the other end, the long end, cross, and go in through that hole, out here, back in through the bottom one, and then tie it off so you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. A little hammock there, do you see? So that's going to be what you tie your tether piece onto. Then you tie your tether piece on. Mm -mm. At the end of that, make it nice and nice and nice and long. At the end of that, put a little bit of card so you can release it out as it gets, starts taking off up into the air. 
And then lastly, my favourite bit, which is the tail. So you could do loads of things with this. You could be a traditionalist and have a tail with bows on it, or you might have multiple tails, loads of them, with maybe different shapes at the end, like circles or triangles or something like that. Um, if you were doing, a, I don't know, a pizza inspired uh, flying structure, you might have bits of pepperoni at the bottom hanging off of it, or the bits, the tail might be like cheese strings or something like that. Um, and that is you almost done now uh, for making a flying structure. If you would like to engage with any of our other workshops, you can log on to recreate.ie. All our workshops and stuff are there. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been great. I'm going to go out and test my uh, flying structure shortly when the wind picks up. I'll finish it off first, obviously, uh, when the wind picks up. And um, happy flying, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.